AMD have released their 580 series, well, their 500 series graphics cards today. And it's April the 18th, so basically you can go and pre-order the 550, the 560, the 570, but you can get the 580, which you can buy today at around 230 pound or 220 pound, depending if you're getting the four gig version or the eight gig version, and also that is in dollars as well. So around the same price. So this is the Polaris redefined version of the AMD graphics card. So basically it's just a rebrand and it's gonna be clocked at the sort of the same speed. It's basically the same architecture of the 480, or the RX 480 graphics card. So there's not really much of a difference. So if you do own a 480 already, then there's no point upgrading because you're not. it's not really an upgrade. It's a bit like the um, Intel 6700K and the 7700K. Obviously the 7700K runs hotter than the 6700K and the 6700K has been out longer than the 7700K, but it's slightly clocked a little bit higher. So this is what it's like to have um, an RX 580. It's basically a higher clock speed than what the RX 480 is, which is an older generation card. But also we're supporting Vulkan and We've got chill, which means that it will drop down frame rates. So if you've got like a game and you're just standing there doing nothing, the frame rates will drop down, which means that your TDP or kind of the power uses that you're using will actually drop down as well. So you won't be using so much power. And it's also meant to be overclockable as well by about a 17% um, overclock. But it depends on what graphics card you got, and it also depends on how you're gonna be calling it, whether it's a reference card or non-reference card. So 2560 by 1440, which is your average, well not your average, but it's your basically 1440p, which is graphics card should be able to handle frame rates per second, like your normal Battlefield 1 or your Grand Theft Autos and other games that will basically be able to see around 60 to 70 to 80 frames per second while playing these games at high frame rates or high settings I should say and basically getting a great optimised 1440p playback off these graphics cards. Now overclocking them uh, you should see um, like your degrees go up to about 75 degrees which is slightly hot on the graphics card but if you've got um, suitable air cooling in the case depending on what case you got because there's a lot of cases with tempered glass and it's all about aesthetics and they're kind of forgetting about the airflow inside the case so if you've got decent airflow inside the case you're going to be able to run the graphics card slightly hotter because it will be slightly cooler because you'll have more uh, fans inside the system to run so who is AMD's graphics cards who are they actually for well this is for the gaming market and then basically this is going to be versus kind of the GTX 1060, the 1070 maybe, but I doubt it, and definitely the 1050 and the 1050 Ti. Now, if the GTX, because obviously GTX uh, NVIDIA graphics cards are going to have a rebrand as well, and they're going to be more upgraded, like the GT, there should be a GTX 1060 Ti coming out, and obviously a GTX 1070 Ti, they should be out fairly soon, and that's where the competition is going to be lying, well, in line with. And that means that it's great for us to see if Nvidia is going to be able to drop down the price to be compared to AMD because AMD are kind of coming in and they're chopping heads off with their prices but they've also got price and performance but as I said it's not really much of a jump from the RX 480 but obviously it's got new technology and the new technology is obviously it supports Vulkan and Direct uh, uh, 12 as well so that's, that's pretty awesome. Also involved in this card is FreeSync as well, and as well as it's got some um, HV um, encoding. So basically, it's um, able to encode in 4K and obviously H.264, and that means it's a bit on par, near enough, with the CUDA cores of a GTX 1060, 1070, 1080, those sort of graphics cards, because what you would know, what Nvidia is known for is CUDA cores, and AMD wasn't, you had to uh, go into special things to unlock it, to get CUDA cores released or whatever. But now, it's kind of that, it's, it, you can use it for video editing and gaming, but, when I get my hands on the actual 580, I'm going to be testing it for uh, gaming as well as for workflow. But not like too in-depth workflow, but just normal video, video editing and light video editing and see where we go with it.
So overclocking, well we know that AMD's graph, um, CPUs weren't overclocking too much but obviously after a, a, a bit of a time period it's kind of sorted it out and they've kind of making it like a bit of a clean slate. They're basically sorting out all the errors and getting all the feedback and sorting it out. Now with this sort of graphics cards, when it's going to be first launched, you're not going to be able to overclock like really mad, but it depends, as I say, on calling and if you're going with a reference card or you're going with a different third party manufacturer like MSI, Asus, or uh, in, in 3D and stuff like that. And you know, it, it depends what graphics card you're going to go for, and it's not going to be much of a boost. It's only going to be maybe a 3 to 5% boost in frame rates per second. So, as I've done my research a little bit more about the RX 580, I've noticed that you need at least a minimum of a 500 watt power supply. Now, if you're water cooled in and everything like that, then it, you can need uh, power for the, um, the NVMe, the RAM, the motherboard, everything like that. But also, if you're running mechanical hard drives, you need power for that. And it all kind of melts up, but 500 watts is quite a lot just for a graphics card and also the graphics card comes in variants of 8 pin and 8 pin and a 6 pin so with the third party ones I'm guessing you're going to get an 8 pin and a 6 pin which is more power efficient to the graphics card and I guess that's with the 8 gig versions and not the 4 gig uh, memory versions and also one more bit of research I did is that I noticed that certain places that were selling the graphics card which was saying that it was supported with uh, Linux, Windows 7 and Windows 10. I didn't see no Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 or even Windows XP or Vista which means that don't really, not really, well I don't really know if it's going to actually work on any older systems but I'm not too sure either if we're running with uh, RX 580 and AMD's Ryzen CPU if it's going to run better in benchmarks and games or real world results or vice versa that you use a GTX 1060 with, uh, with uh, Ryzen and then um, Intel with uh, the RX 580. We don't know yet but I'm going to be finding that out. I'm going to be testing that and yeah basically I've come to the end of the video because I want to know your comments down below. And basically I want to know what you want to see from these videos that I, when I get my hands on the RX 580, what you want to see. Do you want to see like synthetic benchmarks? Do you want to see it pushed and overclocked like mad? Do you want a build guide? Uh, do you want to see water cooling, a very budget orientated build? So yeah, leave your answers and questions, well, answers? Leave your questions down below and let me know. But if you like this video, subscribe. If you like this sort of content, dislike it if you dislike it. And yeah, I'll see you next one. And don't forget to like the video.